stage the chair of the Madam Market Theatre Trust, Susan Seddon, who is going to welcome to the stage two very special people for all of you. Thank you, Peter. And um, I've been involved with being in this theatre for about 38 years. And uh, I always had a hankering to play Cleopatra, and I'm, I had to accept that my time had passed. But it's a I'm, I'm, at least I'm standing <laughs> on the set, and um, the trap door has kind of glass under there. <laughs> but uh, but I, have, I have been able to be involved with the production and I've really enjoyed helping Peter with it. And uh, um, as I said, I've been around this place for 38 years. I hope many of you have been to my house before, but I know that there are some people in the audience who've never been here before. And I hope this will be the first of many visits you will make to this wonderful place. Um, so, oh, and I must say, did you enjoy the nibbles? Yeah. Because um, I'm going to plug the occasion. Seven Surrey Street. Remember the next. <laughs> so, um, it's my privilege to welcome to the stage Anthony and Cleopatra. <laughs> Anthony and Cleopatra's little Mediterranean timeshare. <laughs> I'm sure they'll take bookings if anybody is interested. John, before we uh, we hear from you, John's going to read a sonnet for us. As I said, he's a, an established actor here at the Madam Market Theatre, as well as doing many, many sets for us here for, for all the productions we've had over the years. And uh, I think your, your fantastic swan song being Go Go Madam. Uh, John, it's obviously a Shakespearean theme. How many Shakespeare... How many Shakespearean plays have you got on there? We've got 34 Shakespeare <laughs> plays on there. There are actually 37, but then you can't count Henry IV Part Two or Henry VI Part Two and Three. so <laughs> we've got 34. And don't talk to me about Two Noble Kinsmen, because if it wasn't in the Shakespeare canon when I studied, I don't want to know about <laughs> it. 34 it is. Don't give me any arguments. <laughs> John, I I'm, I'm looking at uh, particularly this side. I mean, we'll give people an opportunity to come up on stage and have a look uh, all around the dragon. But I'm looking at this side, and I think it's much ado about nothing. Mm. Yeah. That's probably one of the biggest uh, pieces of work you've had to do on there. But which which plays were easier? Which plays were harder? Um, which took more time? Um, I don't think there were any. Uh, some were yes. Yeah, some were very hard. I looked at something like Pericles and I thought, what on earth am I going to do for that? It's a play that hardly anybody knows. Tom Watson, who is Ina Barbus in Anthony and Cleopatra, said to me, it was only about four days ago, he said, well, there's that business about Pericles' wife who dies on board ship giving birth and they put her in a casket and she floats away for four days and washes up on a seashore. So I thought, that's it. That won't take up too much space. And that's on the inside of the wing. Some of us <laughs> were very hard. The, the hardest of all was all's well that ends well. So the, in the end, I thought the only thing I could do is write it on the very tip of the tail, because that is all's well that ends well. <laughs> and some of the artists of the dragons, and yourself included, have been actually painting the dragons while members of the general public have been in and been able to see you working on them. Any little nuggets of things that people have said to you as you've been painting? Um, 
No, not Apart from let me get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up against it. Mostly they studiously ignored me as if I shouldn't have been there. But, uh, I, I have one tip for artists, really. Keep away from children <laughs> who come in because they can't just look, they have to touch. <laughs> and so some of it looks like a wax resist painting because of all the little finger marks. Fantastic. Um, we'll literally obviously be going down into our, our lower courtyard uh, for the festival and uh, I'm sure it will be a much interest in people as it has done while it's been in the building and you've been painting. Uh, so John, I, I should get out of the way and I should let you do your bit. Well I thought that nothing I could say, no words that I could produce, and in fact nothing I could paint could equal the words of Shakespeare whose birthday it was yesterday. So, I decided to read, not a sonnet, but a little piece from As You Like It. That the Duke, the rightful Duke, is exiled to the Forest of Arden, and they find it's really quite nice. And they see some people who are in a worse place than they are, and the Duke observes, this wide and universal theatre presents more woeful pageants than the scene wherein we play. And one of his courtiers gave with think that's right. All the world was stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and each man in his time plays many parts. His acts being seven ages. At first, the infant, mewling and puking in his nurse's arms, and then the whining schoolboy with his shining face and satchel, creeping like snail, unwillingly to school. And then the lover, sighing like furnace, with a woeful ballad made to his mistress' eyebrow. And then the soldier, full of strange oaths, and bearded like the pard, jealous in honour, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then, a justice, in fair round belly with good cape on lined, with eye severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise sores and modern instances. And so he plays his part. The sixth age slips into the sear and yellow leaf spectacles on nose and pouch on side, his youthful hose well saved, a world too wide for his shrunk shanks, and his big manly voice turning again to childish treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. Last age of all, which ends this strange eventful history <coughs> Second childishness and mere oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans.